Hello and welcome back. I'm Loigo and this is My Life in Football Manager episode 31. And in this episode, we've got the playoff final where we face Coventry. But before we get to that, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you want Football Manager content Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, hit the subscribe button down below as well. And I just want to say the reason that I've stretched this out is I didn't want to show too many playoff games. If we'd have got knocked out, we'd have got knocked out, but we have made it to the final against Coventry. So let me come to the schedule and let me walk you through what's happened in the last part of the season. And as you can see, after that defeat Colchester and the form more or less just collapsed. No real reason as to why I don't think selling for Regra could have caused this much damage and it got to the point that we even scheduled a friendly against South Shields. Then through April and May it, it was very random um, as you can see we went on to beat Blackpool 4-1 but then followed that up with a 1-0 defeat against Rochdale but then bounced back again by smashing Luton 5-1 before consecutive defeats to Barnsley and Coventry but then we managed to swing it back around in May beating MK Dons in the final day of the season. And as we come down, you can see that we played Barnsley, we beat them 3-2 at our place, went to their place, and it was a reverse of the first leg, 3-2, and it went all the way to penalties. And it was a bit of a tetchy affair, but we managed to make it through in the end. So we are rewarded now, Coventry, one game, playoff final. Winner goes up to the Championship. And admittedly, they've beat us most recently, and also... If we go back to the league, you can see that they finished comfortably above us, 10 points clear, with them only just missing out on automatic promotion to crew on goal difference. So all in all, you would say that they've got the upper hand going into this. If we just scoot across to the tactics screen, this is the team that will be facing Coventry in the playoff final. Malcolm comes in on the right-hand side because Osborne, unfortunately, is not fit to play. Ajay is been a bit of a disappointment so he's only going to be starting on the bench so we end up going with Maxwell in goal Bradford Umar McGuinness and Minoga make up the back four Anderson and Ewing are the two central midfielders Malcolm Chisler and Coyle are the attacking midfielders with George Nunn leading the line so let's move on to the game let's go into the dressing room I mean team talks at this point are fairly straightforward I mean it's a huge game at Wembley winners get promoted into the championship there's not much to say other than Coventry beat us last time and let's go avenge that by rubbing it in their faces that we're going to get promoted. And we'll send the assistant to do the pre-match press conference. We get the big intro. There's our 4-2-3-1 as you can see. And I believe Coventry going to go 4-2-3-1. Yeah, that's what they did in the last couple of games. So it's like for like two very evenly matched teams. Coventry, like I said, probably... Um, the stronger team coming into this are more likely going to be the favourites. But looks like we're taking it to them early on. We've got 10 minutes on the clock. And we've got six, seven shots now. But that said, Coventry get the first highlight. And it's headed over. I mean, we've got to be defending set pieces a lot better than that. But back down the other end now. We've got a free kick. And Anderson, man to step up. Whips it in straight at the keeper though. Should be doing a bit better. It's quite a way out so it was always going to be difficult to score from there. But highlights continuing and the keeper's made a bit of a mess with the distribution. Malcolm driving forward into the area. Shoots into the side netting. Did well until the finish. Really needs to be going across goal there. But so far so good. We'll just shout a bit of encouragement to the team. Just... Uh, Keep them motivated and Mark McGuinness with the header gets the goal. Eighth goal of the season for Mark McGuinness and we are 1-0 to the good in this playoff final. And this is what we wanted, getting the early start, getting the confidence behind the team. And what a corner that is, McGuinness having to come out a little bit. But downward header, straight past the keeper, what a goal that is. And now we really need to capitalise on this now, punish Coventry, keep attacking. And we're half an hour in. Coventry starting to get a bit of a foothold in the game. Four shots, but nothing on target. And Anderson whipping the ball in. What cross that is. And McGuinness with a header, but this time hits a crossbar and goes over. Now Coventry down our end. It's a little one-two with a throw in. They get the cross in, and again, they win the header, and we're not defending these crosses well. 
and just before half time were punished. And just as I thought we were getting a foothold in this game and really going to take it to them, it's as simple as a 1 2 cross to the far post. And who's that? Chislet. Yes, he's an attacking midfielder. He's a little bit on the short side, but needs to be defending better than that. And we're going at half time 1 1. Not too bad, but as you can see, expected goals were doing better. We're going to pump the fist though, keep motivating the team. And all we need now is one goal and no clear cut chances for either team. And I think we'll make our first substitution now. And I'm just thinking, what do we do? We've got no one playing fabulously in the middle of midfield. Oli Ewing is the most tired. But Jove and Malcolm's the one not really doing anything. So I tell you what, we'll bring a Jai on, put Nun out onto this right hand side as the inside forward. Switch Jai up to the advanced forward. And uh, that should give us a bit more attacking impotence or an attacking threat. But the game's running on, no real highlights coming. So we'll look to make a substitution, but we will do that after this highlight. Bradford to Chislet, looping into the back post. I'm not sure whether that was a cross or a shot. But either way, it's um, poor and it's into the keeper's hands. And Bradford does well to win the header. It falls to Coyle. Coyle inside to Anderson. Chislet, none. Ajay. And it's just over. And it's a chance for Ajay. Tries to test the keeper, but again, should be hitting the target. 75 minutes on the clock. We'll make our substitution. And we've got two substitutions left and we'll start by bringing Ben Close on for Anderson a bit more age and experience in the midfield and I think we'll leave it there we don't want to burn everybody out just yet because if this does go to extra time we're going to want fresh legs but I thought we had a penalty there with the throw in Chislet was brought down but it wasn't a foul and now we're looking to build McGuinness. Nah, that's never going to work. Lumps it over the top, straight into the keeper's arms. Giving Coventry the ball back with 10 minutes to go. Oh, and McGuinness misses ahead of Wes Burns is in. And thankfully Maxwell pulls off a fantastic save. Saving the blushes there of McGuinness. And we've got to defend another cross which we haven't done well so far. But it's headed clear by Umar, and it's only as far as a Coventry player, it's going to come straight back at us. And they look to get it in down the left. It's a good block from Chislet, so he's uh, doing his defensive duties rather well. And and Oli Ewing's injured, so we'll swap that over. We'll bring Perry on, who didn't start because he's not a big game player. So we left him out, but it's a long ball forward. A you thing, chance to... Oh, I was going to say, chance to win it, but straight at the keeper. He manages to get it back into the box. Chislet loses out, and Coventry have got a counter-attack going here. And that's a poor ball. Umar launches it straight into the stands. And we've got extra time. Not what I wanted. Not the way I wanted to do this playoff final. I wanted to get out there, win the game early. But we'll pump our fists, tell them to keep avenging the defeat last time to Coventry. And Coventry, again with a set piece, Umar heads it straight back to the corner taker, so it's going to come back in. Oh, and what a big miss that is. I thought that was a goal there for Coventry. But thankfully it's headed over. And 100 minutes on the clock now. And Do we get another substitution? We'll try taking George Nunn off. Oh, we do. We've got Stuart that can come on. So we'll try a Jai out on this right-hand side, play him as the inside forward. George Nunn's had a poor game, so it's up to Stewart now to lead the line. And we're at half-time in extra time. Still 1-1. We've still had the best chances, but it's Coventry with all the highlights in extra time. And that one's headed over. And it's only surely a matter of time before they get the winner at this rate. We really need to be doing something. And it just seems like we've run out of energy. Again, Coventry with a set piece here. It's whipped in and again headed over. I mean, our defending at set pieces is appalling. And we're lucky we've not been punished, but it's going to penalties. And the team look fairly confident. The only one that's rather anxious is Ben Close. Everyone else is uh, 
fairly happy, but we'll get the assistant to pick that and we'll just remove Ben Class from there. We don't want him high up on the list, but I said he's still a decent penalty taker. So we'll put him in sixth and we'll tell the boys not to live to regret this. So it all comes down to penalties. Coventry are up first in front of their fans. And that's a good penalty. Maxwell anticipates it going down the middle, but it's to the side. It's a good penalty. Now we need Chislet to even it up. Good penalty from Chislet. And if Maxwell can get one or two saves here, he can be the hero of this penalty shootout. And they go try and down and the try and go down the middle, but Maxwell saves it. What a save, he guesses right this time. And Coyle now steps up with a chance to take the lead. Coyle, oh, that's a poor penalty, and it's 1-1. One, one. It's a good save from the Coventry keeper, but we needed Coyle to really make it count. And it's another good save from Maxwell. Maxwell is the hero of this penalty shootout. We need a joy to finally get the ball in the back of the net and he does a joy it's been a disappointment but manages to score puts us 2-1 up now in the penalty shootout all the pressure on Coventry and they score 2-2 two -two. we've got Minoga now trots down ball on the spot goes to the keeper's left keeper just gets his fingertips to it but it's a good penalty from Minoga 3-2 to Sunderland. Coventry need to score to stay in this tie. We've managed to put all the pressure on them. Can Maxwell make the save? Guess he's the right way, but can't quite make the save. And it's 3-3. Three, three. And up steps Phil Bradford, vice captain. Only 19 years old, remember. Bradford with the chance to put Sunderland in the championship, and he does. Phil Bradford scores 4 3. We avenge the defeat against Coventry. And look at that XG, we deserved it. But we're going to the dressing room. Outstretch the arms. Very well done. And do we get the animation? I'll send the assistant to the press conference. Doesn't look like we get an animation for the playoffs. I thought we did, but never mind. There's confirmation that we win in the final and we're up to the championship. Ola Ewing, gash lower leg, that's no problem. Now the initial budget's going into next season. This will be interesting. How are we going to get back? 165,000 on the wage budget and 20 million euros to spend. Now, if we just go into the finances, you can see that's an extra 100,000 added onto the wage budget. That's huge. So what we need to do is make sure we make the right additions going into the squad to help us survive next season. But those additions will be in the next episode. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for Football Manager videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And I'll see you next time.